David Stearns for Patriots Hockey. Practice is back in full swing this week as the boys split the weekend against the East Coast Eagles. Game one, of course, down 3 nothing in the second period going into the third. A resilient comeback. Didn't turn out to be successful in the end as they lost 5-3. to three. And then in game two, they took that one 6-1. to one. You can check out the video from those games on YouTube. And check out our webpage, crossicefeed.com, to watch the replays of those games. But looking ahead here, the guys are moving into the showcase up in New Jersey this coming weekend. They have three woeful opponents ahead of them. They have the Apple Corps, they have Wilkesbury Scranton, and the Portland Pirates. Of course, the Portland Pirates are a new team in the league, but they're kind of revamped with Green Mountain Glades folding into that organization. So it's pretty much two powerful teams put into one in the EJHL. So we'll have to wait and see how these guys fare coming up in New Jersey, but let's see what the guys are talking about. We talked with Coach John Mahaffey just a few moments ago. Let's hear what he had to say. David Stearns joined here with Coach John Mahaffey. Coach, the uh, past weekend, the first game, let's get started with that, right? Down 3 nothing after the second period and uh, a, a resilient comeback in the third period. But what happened? I, I, I'm more interested to find out what you saw that led to the 3 nothing deficit going into the third. Hey Dave, I think it was just a uh, couple bad bounces, to be honest with you. Uh, one On the second goal, that was a bad turnover, and then we kind of lost our guy, lost our positioning a little bit, and uh, they capitalized it. But on the first and third one, there's just some bad luck, some bad bounces, chipped over the defenseman's stick, and it, it found a way into the back of the net. So um, tough break for us, um, but they did kind of regroup pretty well. Now, as they regrouped in the uh, second game, uh, definitely a different story. But the first game, you guys allowed uh, more than 30 shots. In that second game, it was only 21 shots. What was the difference between those two games that uh, held off the shot differential? To be honest with you, I think it was just a little bit of nerves in the first game. Um, I think they had so much energy in the first. Uh, it just translated into bad decisions and just some, I don't know, be nervous. I, you know, there's really no other way to put it. A little antsy, I guess. Um, second game, they were just more, much more comfortable with what we were doing. Um, they were more relaxed. I think they were more focused based on the results from the previous night, and it obviously translated to a much better effort. Any standout players in your mind that uh, I guess you would say were the top two or maybe top three that really stood out to you this past weekend? Yeah, and I thought. Uh, Ian Edgington was probably my most solid throughout the entire weekend. I mean, there were guys that may have been uh, better than him at times, but from the beginning of the first game to the end of the second game, he was just very solid, uh, and that's what I want. It's not going to be flashy, but it just got us to get the job done. Um, but like, you know, we had a coach's meeting it's a little while ago, and there's just so much parity between all eight defensemen. You know, you could be one one day and eight the next day and vice versa. So we have a lot of depth, and that's going to be good. Now, um, how are you going to deal with that depth going into this coming weekend with the showcase? Uh, you have two very competitive uh, com uh, opponents coming yeah, up here yeah. with uh, Portland and Apple Corps. Uh, how are you going to deal with those, especially considering um, was it Wilkes-Barre and Apple Corps are going to be the two league games? Three well-rounded opponents, Wilkes-Barre being an AJ team, yeah. two of the other teams being up in the EJ. Yeah. How are you going to deal with that depth? Well, I mean, everybody's going to get some shots. I mean, it's you know we'll probably dress seven defensemen out probably in the first game. It's a league game. Um, so we have so much depth there. We probably have more depth on D than we do on forwards. Okay. Um, not slating the forwards by any mean, but I think it's just the way it's shaked out. And then we'll go there. I mean, guys are going to get a chance. Um, so whoever plays the best, it's pretty much merit-based with me. Keeping with the same systems that you ran, uh, ran with on Sunday? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's going to be pretty much our bread and butter all year. All right. Uh, uh, one other thing. Yep. Yeah. Penalties. Those penalties were really loaded uh, on, on, on both games, on both accounts. Uh, and, and I know that you're the penalty kill specialist. Um, I'm not going to ask you, you know, about discipline and everything with the team. What did you think about the penalty kill overall? I thought the penalty kill was outstanding. I think that really kind of set the tone and actually probably won the second game for us. You come out and you kill a major. Uh, and I, what did we give up? Maybe two shots the entire time. They didn't really get much zone time when they got it, and we got it right out. Um, that pretty much deflated them for the rest of the game. Don't forget the shorthanded goal. Absolutely. <laughs> even better. So, actually, he's one that uh, I think Cameron got that one. He's one that doesn't even practice PK that much in practice. But uh, Rick snuck him out there for us, and it worked out well. Well, good luck this coming weekend. Thank you. Well, it looks as though John Mahaffey has quite a deep bench there on defense. 
So it should be interesting to see what kind of combinations he goes with this coming weekend in the showcase. We also took a chance there to talk to a couple of those defensemen. We talked to Grayson Rooney. David Stern is joined here with number 15, Grayson Rooney of the Dublin Patriots, EJ. Grayson, Frederick, uh, Mer uh, Virginia, correct? Yes, okay. Um, so you're a local guy, and uh, you've, you've had some experience too uh, you know, with the local hockey. Let me ask you your opinion. Um, how is the hockey scene here in the DC Metro area? The hockey scene here in the DC Metro area is way different compared to last year. In the uh, Capital Bellway hockey league, it's much more faster. Uh, uh, it's going to take a little bit to get used to it. Bigger guys, faster pace, but I love it. It's awesome. Okay. Oh. Uh, it's good to know it's not from Buffalo, so I, I, I like to know what the scene is like around here. So, all right, so hockey is alive and well in Washington. All right, let's uh, talk about last weekend. Last weekend you had two power play assists, and uh, it seemed like they depended on you a little bit out there on the power play. Talk about the special teams work that you guys did this past weekend. Uh, special teams work, we uh, just rolled the puck down low, cycled it, we used our point man, and we fluttered the game, and worked in the puck from blue line to goal line, that's just going to mess up the way. And we had our power play did that really well. We were able to fire some pucks on the head, Got some good rebounds and banging them again. How is it uh, playing with Coach John Mahaffey? Coach John Mahaffey, uh, he's, <laughs> he's a funny guy. He, um, he's hard ass, he is, but he's, uh, he's a funny guy. He's fun to play football. Now, where did you play prior to uh, joining the team? Ashburn Extreme. Okay, uh, Ashburn Extreme. I'm not very familiar with Ashburn Extreme. Uh, 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 tell us a little bit about that. Uh, the Ashburn Extreme, the double A. Moved up a little bit. Okay. Now, what, what did you welcome to the board? Uh, the Patriots. Uh, to be honest with the Patriots, I uh, would love to finish my junior eligibility out and actually go to college. So, it's going to be too long. It doesn't matter how it's going to All right, thanks for stopping by. Also, we had an opportunity to talk to Ian Edgington, one of the grinders that John Mahaffey had talked about. So, let's hear what Edgington had to say. David Stearns joined here with Ian Edgington, Fairfax Station, Virginia native. More locals, uh, more locals on this team than I've ever seen in this area. Um, I was actually asking Grayson Rooney about the local hockey scene. Uh, in your opinion, what do you think of hockey around this area growing up? Uh, in the beginning, I wasn't going to think that it was going to be extremely competitive. I thought you'd have to travel a lot to go in a high level. But nowadays, since hockey's changing, you could play here and go college D1. Now, your previous experience before the EJHL South team was with the Empire team last year. Talk about your experience in the Empire League. Uh, the team's still in existence here, and um, what, what kind of experience was that for you? Uh, last year was a big change because I was playing AAA the year before that, and it wasn't as big, and yeah, and the speed's a lot different. You have like shorter time to make a decision. Now, uh, talk about uh, the coaching style of John Mahaffey. Uh, he talked highly of you from this past weekend and your work ethic out there. Um, how is it uh, playing under uh, Mahaffey as a defensive coach? I love it right now. If we get the defensive uh, system down, we could really uh, hurt some teams. Talk about the depth on defense. It's the, kind of the talk right now. You've got eight solid defensemen. You're one of them. Uh, how does that work amongst the eight of you uh, as far as the competition? Do you guys really see it that way? Um... When it comes to game time, yeah, we do, but in practices, we're just trying to get better and improve. All right, well, thank you for stopping by. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right, Ian Edgington, defenseman for Potomac Patriots. Also, we had a chance to talk to Nathan Marks. Nathan Marks had a very solid weekend. He had an even strength goal, a power play goal, an assist on the power play, and four minutes in penalty. Well, here, here I am talking to him about my fantasy stats. I wish I would have had with him on my fantasy team. All right, David Stearns joined here with Nathan Marks. Uh, Nathan, if I had a fantasy team, you would have helped me a lot this past weekend. Yeah. An even strength goal, a power play goal, a power play assist, and four minutes in penalties. A busy weekend for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, give a lot of credit to my line mates, you know. Shouldn't have got a couple of those penalties, but 
you know, the power play worked well. It's the first time we really did it in a game, so we're happy about that. Talk about the difference between the two games. The first game, uh, it was a solid first period effort, and then the wheels kind of fell off the wagon. What happened in that game? Uh, I think we just came out a little nervous and scared for the first game. We didn't know what to expect, you know. A lot of us haven't played together, but we got our heads on the second game, so... So that second game, everything came together. How's the tempo going right now uh, leading into the showcase this coming weekend? I know this is your first day of practice, but what's the attitude right now in the locker room? You know, it's really good. After the win, a lot of us felt a lot better. So and this is a good tempo practice so far, so we'll be all right. Being a local guy, uh, I've been asking all the local guys this question. Uh, what is your impression of the hockey scene in this area? I mean, have you grown up here, and uh, is hockey always been in your life here? Well, I used to live in Detroit, so, wow. yeah, right. that's where I started. You know, we had a rink in our backyard, and it's a lot different here than there. But, you know, I think it's grown a lot. Red Wings fan? Yeah, big Red Wings fan. Good for you. Thanks for stopping by. David Stearns here with Matt Whipper. Uh, Whip, you have that noticeable speed out there last weekend that uh, Brian and I were just completely all over. You were kind of the unsung hero out there, especially on special teams. Um, how did it feel out there on the ice for the first weekend? Um, you know, the first game, you know, they, they brought it pretty hard. Um, so they, they played the body. Um, but uh, definitely the second game, it was a lot better to get your feet moving. And it was good that we were scoring, you know, get some confidence in our system um, to move on for the next weekend. What was the attitude in the locker room? I mean, we saw a, kind of an undisciplined team um, in the first game more so than the second game, but uh, a lot of penalties built up between the two teams in those two games. Uh, what was it like in the locker room? Um, you know, we try to keep it positive, but, I mean, obviously we were, we were clearly frustrated. Um, and, uh, you know, we were talking. Everybody was, like, you know, trying to keep it pretty normal, but uh, I don't know, it, was, it was fine, I think. Being the first uh, day of practice here, coming into uh, the weekend ahead at the showcase, um, how are you feeling going into the showcase? Uh, you guys have uh, is it Apple Corps, Wilkesbury, and Portland. Yeah. Um, it, what, how do you how are you guys feeling right now? Um, you know, we just we just want to come out here and have a good week of practice. Um, definitely got to practice harder than we did last week, and we got to play a lot more physical in practice so we can get ready for the games. Um, I know we've heard a lot about these teams coming up this weekend, but honestly, they're just other teams, and we got to prepare for them like we would any other team. Um, we just got to keep it upbeat, get the tempo going, and, and try and you know build some confidence here too. Any changes in the lineup as far as the line combinations or any kind of systems that you can see going into this coming weekend, or are things pretty much remaining the same? Um, things are relatively the same. I think we switched up a few players. Um, with Reese out, one of the games that complicates things. Um, but I think it's generally the same. There's a few wingers switched up, but, you know, nothing nothing you haven't seen yet. All right, thanks for stopping by, and good luck this weekend. <laughs> David Stearns joined here with Coach Rick Hildreth. Coach, um, first weekend, and uh, disappointment in the first game. A really good comeback. Uh, from Saturday night's loss to a great victory Sunday morning. How has it been working with the offense and trying to figure out your line strategies? Well, there, there's so many possible combinations on this team. It's going to take probably a good four to six weeks to go through some different combinations and see what's going to work. And all the guys like each other. All the guys would like to play on different guys' lines. You know, everybody wants to be on this line or that line. And they'll all get the opportunity to move around as we go forward here. But what's going to work the best is it's just too early to tell. I mean. Oftentimes it happens, a combination you think is not going to work ends up being great. And of course you start the year thinking you got the perfect combination set up and you know it doesn't work at all. You saw that on Saturday, you know, things we thought would be good pairings, you know, didn't work out so well. So, you know, 4 to 6 weeks and we'll have it down. Well, you had the magic come out of Cameron Smith and Andrew Turgeon over the weekend. Any surprise players that uh, are kind of the unsung heroes right now that maybe didn't make it to the score sheet? Yeah, you know, uh, Travis Reese didn't have such a great weekend, couldn't play much on Sunday because of his penalty. He's a superstar player, unbelievable speed. Michael Carr um, certainly is going to be a top-notch player with his speed. Um, he wasn't, I don't think, on the score. Maybe he had an assist or two. Um, 
We didn't create much five on five. We, uh, we had nine goals this week, and I think seven were on special teams, two five on five. All right. So a lot of guys were just trying to get their feet wet. Um, Nathan Marks played better as the weekend went on, ended up with a couple goals Sunday, but didn't do much Saturday. Um, the defensemen are certainly going to contribute a lot more in our, in our offensive zone system. Once we get our offensive zone rolling the way we want it to, the defensemen are going to be much more involved. So you'll see them on the score sheet a lot more too. Now you do have a deep enough lineup that you do have some players on the rotation on the back end. Um, how does that work with your lines? Um, are you set in stone right now with your lines, or are you looking to rotate guys in just to kind of play around with the lines? Yeah, we're still playing around with the lines, and we actually have eight defensemen, so there's going to be games that will skate 11 forwards and 7 deep. Some games will do 12 forwards and 60, um, just to kind of depending on how guys are playing, um, just trying to give everybody the opportunity to play. So we're going to go into this game Friday with 11 forwards and 7 defensemen. Um, because we have a lot of defensemen playing well, and we want to get them ice time, and we want to see what they can do. So we'll go with 7D on our game Friday, and then we'll, we'll make adjustments from there. And, uh, you know, at some point, I hate to say it, but uh, you have to start with 25 guys, but some guys take some injuries and miss a week here, a couple weeks there. We got one kid that's sick. So it's always nice to have these extra guys. It, at the beginning of the year, kind of everybody wants to get in the lineup. But we went to Syracuse last year, with 16 players one weekend. We started out the year with 25 guys, and we spent a weekend on the road in Syracuse against the number one team in the league with 16 guys. That's all we could get in the lineup. Mm -hmm. So you, you need everybody. What are your expectations out of this weekend? Apple Corps, Wilkes-Barre, and Portland. Uh, what do you see coming out of those three teams versus your squad? Well, this is, this is new for us, so I don't know what to expect. Um, so this is a new experience. We, we need to be able to play with these teams. You know, wins and losses is very early in the season at this point. But we just need to be able to skate with them and play hockey with them and be able to play our game in high-pressure situations. We're going to see that this weekend. So it'd be a, this is a perfect test for us early in the year to see if we can step up our game to the level we need to, to be able to play at. All right, Coach Hildreth, good luck this weekend. Thank you. All right, thanks for stopping by. Coach Hildreth for the Potomac Patriots. The Patriots' season is two games deep with three ahead, two of which will count in league play. Of course, one of those games will be against the Apple Corps, but another interesting one is the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Junior Knights, and that game will count as a league game, although they are in the Atlantic Junior Hockey League. And the Portland Pirates game will just be counted as an exhibition game. So very interesting weekend coming ahead here up in New Jersey. Showcase format, two 25-minute halves, and then the boys will be back here in Prince William Ice Center to take on the Atlanta Knights the following weekend. So stay tuned to the website, crossicefeed.com, and you can also check out the podcast as you're seeing us right now for more details on how they do in the showcase weekend and also how they progress forward into the weekend against the Atlanta Knights. I'm David Stern for Patriots Hockey. As always, don't stop believing.